Hello everyone, welcome to or back to my channel. My name is Annie and today I'm going to be doing a if you liked this, read this video. Now I've seen some people do it where it's like if you like this TV show, you should read this book or if you like this book, you should read this book but I couldn't really make up my mind on if I wanted a category so it's just gonna be if you like this thing then read this book. It might be a movie, it might be a book, it might be a TV show, it might be an idea. We'll see anything like that. So yeah, simple premise. I'm just gonna get into it. First up, I have to recommend my favorite book. So if you liked The Secret History, I would recommend Bunny by Mona Awad. Now Bunny is, it's a, a little bit different, but it has the same sorts of things as The Secret History. If you don't know The Secret History, is a dark academia novel set in this university in I think Vermont or Maine maybe and it follows this group of students that one of them is killed by the others and we unravel how that happened. It's just like the dark academia book. This is also dark academia. It's about this woman that's in a graduate school program for creative writing. The other people in her cohort are these four girls. They all call each other bunny. They seem a little bit weird and crazy maybe. They invite Samantha, the main character, to participate in one of their smut salons which is an after school writing workshop thing that they do just informally but it turns out they're not exactly writing. Uh, I don't want to say what they are doing because I might spoil it but it has a really good critique of academia and especially English literature kind of academics which I love because I'm an English student and sometimes it's nice to be taken down a peg. But this book is just weird and unhinged. And I think The Secret History is also weird and unhinged. So I think people would like the academic setting and the dark academia of it all while also reading a really weird, unsettling book. So that is Bunny. If you like Scream or other just horror movies or movies or books about horror movies, then I would read Night Film by Marisha Pessel. In this world, there's this famous director, movie, screenplay writer guy. <laughs> Don't think I explained that super well, but his name is Cordova and he makes all these films that people call night films. These films are super controversial because they're really dark and yeah, they're so dark that people wonder if they should even be made and they're actually banned and people can only watch them in kind of underground showings. So this book is about a man named Scott who is a journalist and he decides to look into Cordova and his family following the death of Cordova's daughter Ashley. As a reader you get to find out about all of Cordova's different films and how they tie into this mystery which I just found super interesting and I loved reading a book about horror movies. It just made me want to watch them. <laughs> so if you like any sort of horror movie, I think you would like Night Film. Especially Scream. It's not really, the book isn't funny like Scream is, but Scream is kind of like meta commentary on movies and the book felt meta, if that makes sense. The next one I have is if you like Knives Out or Agatha Christie or any sort of like locked room murder mystery. You should read Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I love this series. It's about this girl named Stevie who goes to this school in Vermont again something like that. I think it's Vermont or Maine. It's a school for like high performing students and there's all sorts of quirky characters there and Stevie goes there but someone is quickly murdered and the vibes are just really good. I actually would sort of recommend that for Secret History although Truly Devious is more YA. Like, it's funny, it's fun, there's lots going on. There's a mystery that happens in the past and in the present, so you get kind of doubly mysteries. <laughs> you get double mysteries. I just loved, love this book and this series, and I think it's perfect if you want something kind of like cozy mystery vibe. If you liked Percy Jackson or Harry Potter as a kid, I would recommend Legend Born by Tracy Dion. This book gave me that feeling that I had when I was in middle school and reading Percy Jackson or Harry Potter and you just don't want to stop and it's so easy to read. You wish you could like live in the world. I would be like the biggest Legendborn fan if I was younger. 
I still am the biggest Legendborn fan, but I would be obsessed like to that level. This is about a girl named Brie whose mother just passed away. She gets accepted into an early college program at University of North Carolina, which is actually where her mother went to school. And she goes there and she discovers that the Knights of the Round Table might be real after she witnesses a demon attack. She's also African American and really gets to explore the, her family roots and her history, especially in the enslaved Black South. This series is so good. I am on, I mean, I finished the second book and I'm just waiting for the third one to come out. The second one was almost maybe better than the first. They were definitely at least on equal footing and it just makes me so excited about reading. If you're in a slump, read Legendborn. If you need that nostalgic feeling of someone to root for and like a little fandom moment, do Legendborn. And I like how Tracy Dion discusses complex themes in a way that's very digestible for YA. So that is Legendborn. If you like true crime, true crime podcasts, maybe only murders in the building, by the way, we just started watching the new season, me and my siblings, and it's so good so far. Let me know if you've been watching it. If you like any of that, read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This series is so good, so good. And the second and third book have a podcast element, which is really fun. But the first one as well is very true crime. So Pip Fitzmoby is a true crime aficionado, and there was this thing that happened in her town a few years ago. There was a girl at her high school that went missing. I can't remember her name, unfortunately, but her boyfriend a few days after killed himself. So everyone just kind of assumed that Sal, the boyfriend, was guilty and they pinned this murder on her, which has really hurt his family and the way that the town views them because it's a very small town. And Pippa decides that for her senior capstone project, she is going to investigate the case. Pippa teams up with Sal's younger brother, Ravi, and they try to unravel this cold case. And it's just so good. The partnership between Pippa and Ravi is really good. I love their little detective duo. Pippa is really into true crime and she listens to true crime podcasts all throughout. So I think you'd really like that tie-in if you're into that sort of thing. And also listening to these on audio, is kind of a meta experience there's that word again but it's like if you're listening to an audiobook of a book about a podcast does that even make sense <laughs> okay well anyway it's amazing and i would recommend it very highly also it's a ya but it really goes there i don't even know if it should be ya it's a little bit dark but if you like that that's for you. On a different note, if you like Stardew Valley or anything kind of cute and cozy like that, read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. This one I feel like is kind of a no-brainer. I guess you could also say if you love Animal Crossing, it's the same vibe, but it's more so that these characters make a game that's very reminiscent of Stardew Valley. This book focuses on two game developers and they make a game that's sort of like Stardew Valley. And I just loved reading about it. It made me feel really comfortable and cozy. And when they're making these games, the writing about the game is just so immersive. You feel like you're in it, which is really fun. But this story follows Sam and Sadie, which are two friends that met at a hospital when Sadie's mom was dying from cancer, I believe and Sam had suffered an injury in a car crash that killed his mother and left him unable to walk very well. So the disability representation in this and the chronic pain representation I thought was really good. But they become friends and then they grow up and you kind of just follow them throughout their whole lives, making video games together and falling like in and out of friendship. And it's just really good it's it's really deep and really emotional and because you're with these characters for so long you get to really like get to know them and neither of them are perfect which makes them all the more compelling so i think if you like a sort of stardew valley vibe you'll like that element of the book but hopefully you'll get so much more out of it because of all the characters and everything if you like mrs dalloway or kind of modernist books probably by virginia wolf set in england then I would read The Death of the Heart by Elizabeth Bowen. This book 
it's not as modernist and out there as Mrs. Dalloway, but it has modernist elements. I actually read it for school and I loved it. It's about this girl who's an orphan and goes to live in London with a family member of hers. It's a bit complicated, but basically her dad had a first marriage and a son, which was like his legal marriage. And then he cheated with this girl's mother and they had our main character. And so she goes to live with her half brother and his wife and the whole book is very quiet and tense. You like good classic modernist vibes, read The Death of the Heart. There's also really interesting conversations to be had about this novel and cinema which was just kind of getting started. But basically it follows our main character, I never finished this, it follows our main character as she is staying with her half brother and his wife and then also as she meets this guy and kind of has her first love. It's just really good. It sounds really simple. It's quiet but very powerful. Okay this one I hope that people will get because this is kind of a newer movie but if you haven't seen it yet you should and it's Rye Lane. This movie is so so good. It's set in London and it follows these two people that like meet randomly and then they just go through their day together and it's a rom-com and it's beautiful and if you liked something like that i think that you would like seven days in june by tia williams this is also centering to black main characters this is set in america whereas rylane is set in england but it's about a woman and a man that had a relationship that was very like fast moving and intense when they were young and it ended really badly and they're both now novelists. They run into each other again in I think New York and they realize that they've been writing about each other the whole of their careers and then they try to work out if there's still feelings there or not and it's one of my favorite romance books I've ever read. I don't really like romance usually but I loved that book and there's just something very special about both Rylane and Seven Days in June. I think that both of them are kind of nice and comedic but they both have a sort of deeper note to them and something really heartfelt. That is my recommendation for if you like Rylane or a rom-com sort of thing I guess you could also take it that way. If you liked The Summer I Turned Pretty, the TV shows or the books, I'm gonna recommend two different things both of which I haven't read very recently, but both of which I remember really liking, and that is The Loose Ends List and Alex Approximately. So The Loose Ends List is about this girl who her grandmother died, and before she died, she decided to have everyone go on this cruise. The main character is kind of dealing with grief and loss, but also enjoying like the simpleness of life while on this cruise and potentially getting to know someone that she might like. And Alex approximately is about a girl who goes to stay with her dad for the summer in this town where actually there's this anonymous person that she's been emailing with, kind of like You've Got Mail. And she and this person have a real connection and it's kind of like, she's got a crush on this guy. They both really like movies and they're gonna be in the same town all summer. So she's like, Ooh, should I meet up with him? And then she starts working at this museum and there's this guy that also works there and she finds him really annoying. That's what I'm gonna say about that one. But I think that the thing I liked about these books that you might like if you like The Summer I Turn Pretty is the summer vibes, first of all, from both of them. Also in The Loose Ends List, there's a good conversation around grief, which I feel like is also happening in the summer I turned pretty. And Alex approximately, I don't know, it just gave me drama vibes. It's maybe not as accurate of a recommendation as the loose ends list, but I loved it so I just wanted to put it here. So I did. I did. Next up, if you like Three Women by Lisa Tadeo, read The Woman Destroyed by Simone de Beauvoir. So Three Women is nonfiction about three women and it's like case studies of each one. I personally did not really like it, but I wanted to like it. And something I did really like was The Woman Detroit by Simone de Beauvoir. This is three short stories, so they are actually fictional about women that are kind of aging or 
they're about that point where they're transitioning from being like a mother and their kids are going away or they're just in that later stage of their life and how they're dealing with it and although three women doesn't deal with women that are necessarily older like that there's three stories three different women you're exploring so that's kind of a similarity the way that Simone de Beauvoir writes about age and being a woman is just beautiful and I think that for me I got much more out of that read than I did out of three women no hate if you liked it but try this one if you like the talented Mr. Ripley the book or the movie I haven't read the book but I need to you should read the last Mrs. Miss you should read the last Mrs. You should read The Last Mrs. Parrish, the book. I can't remember the author's name. Sorry, can you tell? I just have no effort to be put in today. I'm sorry. I, I really just made this video idea in like 10 minutes and now I'm filming it. But it's fine, we move. Anyway, The Last Mrs. Parrish, Miss, anyway. The Last Mrs. Parrish is about this woman that basically does what the talented Mr. Ripley does, but it's with a woman. So she meets this woman and she's like, wow, this she's cool and she's rich and she's got a hot husband and she steals her life. And I liked the book okay. I didn't like love, love it, but it did give me talented Mr. Ripley vibes. And if you like a good like rich person drama, it's really fun for that. Last but definitely not least, if you liked The Butler in any movie or TV show, maybe like The Guy in Batman or, oh, Martin from The Parent Trap, you should read The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. This book is so good. It's about this butler who is the main character. He's not always super likable. He's very old fashioned and he has questionable morals because he just believes in serving whoever is running the household that he's in at all costs. He puts his job before anything else and he doesn't believe that a butler should question what their master is doing. He used to be the butler for this wealthy Englishman but he died and now this new American person is starting to own the house and he tells our main character to just take a couple days off while he's out of the country and maybe like take a, take the car, go for a drive. <laughs> so the main character decides to go for a drive down to Cornwall and visit a friend that used to work with him at this house that was maybe potentially also a love interest. And on the way, he kind of reminisces a lot about his time in the house. It's a very moving story. It centers on a character that we that is normally in the background of most books. And I just really, really enjoyed it. So those are all the books I have for the if you like this read this video. <laughs> um, I hope you liked it. I hope you got some good recommendations out of it. If you want to see more from me subscribe to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you can be notified every time I upload. Please like this video if you liked it. It helps me out and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!